Most people are like the moth that wanders aimlessly. It seems never to reach any place nor stay for more than a moment before a new distraction draws it away. The bee, however, works and prepares for difficult times. The moth lives only according to the day when winter comes. The moth disappears while the bee remains storing food to live on. We must learn to collect and store the honey of peace and the power of God. Those who meditate deeply feel a wonderful inner calm. The greater the peace you feel in, meditation the closer you will be to God he approaches. You more and more as you deepen your meditation. Focus your attention inward. You will feel a new power, a new strength, and a new peace in your body, mind, and spirit. Music. You have the privilege and the opportunity to build your own heaven right here, and you have all the means to do so. All you have to do is cut down with the sword of discernment, your restless thoughts one by one when they are all dead. The divine realm of wisdom will be yours. Maintain unshakable peace. There is a cure for stress, Cal. Ness calmness is the ideal state with which we should receive all life's experiences. Nervousness is the opposite of calmness and has become so widespread today that it has turned into a global ailment. The best remedy for nervousness is to cultivate calmness. You should perform all your actions peacefully. For peace is the best medicine for the body, mind, and soul. The world is a great school where ample opportunities are given for people to correct their mistakes and improve. As individuals, no one is born perfect, but there are possibilities for everyone to imper. Ove problems and difficulties should serve to make us better beings, not to create complexes or restrict our mind and heart. You must learn from the many lessons of this world. This world is your best teacher. Stay in the world, but do not be worldly just as oil floats on the surface of water without being affected in any way. You too should remain in the world, amidst pleasures and difficulties. Keep your mind fixed in an unalterable state of peace, even amidst worldly activities and problems. You must remain unchanged. You must maintain a state of balance, you. I may fail to maintain balance a thousand times, but in the long run... You will succeed if you persist in your practice and discipline your mind properly. Every failure is a stepping stone to future success. Never complain about bad environments. Do not try to escape from bad and unfavorable environments. The world is not an obstacle to your spiritual path. The world is your guru. The world is a training school. The world is your best teacher. Each of us must keep in mind that divine life must be lived in small details. If you are divine in the small details, you will be divine in the big things. Be careful if you do not shape your daily life according to your ideal. It will not bear fruit. Always have a cheerful demeanor. Face all difficulties with a smile. Pain is a true eye opener and the true guide. God is putting you through this severe test to make you stronger and more powerful. Understand this well. Never be discouraged. Do not be disheartened. When afflictions, difficulties, and misfortunes arise in the daily battle of life, draw courage and spiritual strength from within. There is an inexhaustible stock of power and knowledge within you. Learn the ways to draw from the source. Dive deep within yourself and understand the laws of the universe. Realize and understand your divine nature. And never complain. Do not protest when you feel overwhelmed by problems and afflictions. Each difficulty is an opportunity for you to develop your will and your strength. Accept this difficulty, strengthen your will, increase your endurance, and turn your mind towards God. Face the with a smile. Do you know who you are? Generally, we believe that we are a personal entity and seek to justify it using. G borrowed ideas to add flavor to our beliefs at this moment. Free yourself from the image you have of yourself. Be lucid. Do not identify with this image. Do not cling to it. Do not feed the ideas you have built around yourself, nor the image people have of you. Do not be someone. Do not be something. Just do not play this game. 
This will bring your attention to the self to constant awareness. Your parents gave you a form and a name. Your education and environment attributed many characteristics to you and you identified with them. In other words, society gave you an idea of being someone thus when you think of yourself. You think of a person with all the particular aspects that accompany this image of yours. This accumulation has gone through many changes, but still, you are aware of them. You are the witness of all changes, but this witness never changes. Whenever you pay attention to a change, you do so from a present position. It is a present thought. It is this continuous presence throughout life that we call the witness. It cannot be said that the witness was born because birth and death are ideas second-hand knowledge. Do something that was told to you, knowing the witness means experiencing the state of presence in all changes. The witness is what is always present. It is what does not identify with change with circumstances and thus observes them. Find this state of presence that is immutable and then observe the yourself. The witness is not an attitude of detachment. It is not a feeling of separation of being on the outside. It is a presence along with the totality in this presence. We need to investigate and know ourselves, what we generally understand as our body and psyche. Observe how you function without the slightest idea of trying to change something. The contemplative state of witnessing will lead us to discover what we are not. We become aware of our thought patterns of the reasons that motivate our actions, of which we were previously barely aware. Soon, you will discover that personality is nothing more than a projection, a habit created by memory and fueled by desire. Thoughts, feelings, and actions appear and disappear, indefinitely creating an illusion of continuity. This is what we call person. The IDE idea of being a person and ego is nothing more than an image sustained by memory. To free yourself from this mental confusion, Simply be aware of it by recognizing yourself as an image. You will gradually feel less involved with it. Just remain aware. It is this contemplative state of witnessing that shines and shows the ego. What it is, an illusion. The thinker, the doer, the sufferer are all forms that, that appear and disappear within the consciousness of I am the ever-living background when mental activity ceases. What remains is pure objectless awareness. This background is our true nature. This reality being formless escapes any definition you must turn your attention to this impersonal background. Turn to stillness. Realize that there is no body that is still. It is an absolutely objectless silence. This is our true nature between two thoughts or two perceptions. There is pure awareness. You are this awareness. You are the primordial consciousness. Life is just primordial. Consciousness realize that your attention is always turned toward objects or ideas, and therefore a sense of being which is free of characteristics seems entirely unknown to you once you free yourself from the idea that I am my body. And the consequences of this idea, you will awaken to your natural state of being Surrender completely to this discovery. What you are fundamentally cannot be experienced through reason. What you are can only be achieved when you eliminate what you are not. When you eliminate this capricious ego that prevents you from being in your own absence, lies your true presence intensifying the pure presence of being can only happen through the total absence of any effort by the simple virtue of discern me meant only in a spontaneous state of inner silence without any premeditation, without any intention, can we open ourselves to our true nature. The I am of pure consciousness when an opening of this order occurs, just remain aware in the silence it creates, without seeking anything, without forcing detach yourself from everything, and what distracts you will lose all substance. Just remain aware. Discover who suffers. Ask yourself who is experiencing this suffering. The one who suffers is the ego, the identity you have constructed and which is linked to your perceptions. And experiences, when you delve into this investigation, you realize that the real self is beyond suffering and doubt. Also ask who doubts likewise. It is the ego that generates doubts the real self.
Pure consciousness is beyond these mental fluctuations. Everything that makes you feel dissatisfied with your ignorant life can in fact be beneficial as it drives you to seek the real self. Often it is through suffering that you are led to this deep search. Suffering can be a powerful catalyst for the realization of the true self. If suffering did not exist, how would the desire for happiness arise? And if this desire did not arise, how could the search for the real self begin? The less you disclose to others, the clearer it becomes that that finding a solution is not as insurmountable as it may initially seem. Trust me, those who claim that everything is exceedingly difficult are simply blind to their own weaknesses. In the face of life's multitude of possibilities, it's necessary to act correctly and keep moving forward, because that's how life operates. Fall seven times and stand up. 8. Knowing this do not allow. Negative feelings to consume you and refuse to let anything or anyone destroy your spirit and motivation rise up and carry yourself as if nothing could disturb you in doing so, you will shield yourself from the desperate vultures seeking to feed on the vulnerability of others. Moreover, you will no longer perceive your problems as insurmountable as you begin to fight back, pushing away negativity and focusing on reality, you will start to see clearer exits and solutions to your problem. After experiencing deception, Betrayal or disappointment that Shay adders your expectations find a comfortable space for yourself. It's crucial to isolate yourself in an environment that is warm and secure. Choose a place where you won't be tempted to relive that disappointment. It's important to learn not to trust blindly and to protect yourself with caution. You must act intelligently and analyze the lies and illusions that others may try to implant in your mind while you shouldn't completely stop trusting everyone and avoid taking any risks. You also shouldn't become someone who refuses new experiences you are not aware of, Tao. He whirled and its sufferings while you sleep, but you are now. While you are awake, remain in that state where these things did not affect you when you are not aware of the world that is when you remain as the real self. In the state of deep sleep, your sufferings do not affect you. Therefore, turn inward and seek the real self. With this, there will be an end to the world and all its miseries. The world does not exist outside of you as you erroneously identify with the body. You see the world as something external to yourself, and then your sufferings appear. But the world and your sufferings are not real seek reality and free yourself from this false feeling the world or ignorance exists only due to our illusion. If the objective reality of the world is an illusion, then the evil that exists in it is also an illusion, and the remedy is to turn the mind inward to the reality of the self. Our essential nature is happiness, but we forget the real self, and imagine that the body or the mind is this self. All suffering is due to this false notion. I am the body. It is this erroneous identification that gives rise to suffer. Ring this tendency is deeply rooted and has grown, strong by being fed over many births, and it must disappear so that your essential nature, which is happiness, can be revealed. The cause of your unhappiness is not in external circumstances. It is within you. It is the ego. All unhappiness and misery come from the ego. It is the source of all your problems. What is the use of attributing the cause of unhappiness to the events of life when the cause is really within you? If you are free from suffering, then there will be no suffering anywhere. The problem C is that you see the world as something external to you and think there is suffering in it, but both the world and suffering are within you. Now if you turn inward, there will be no more suffering. First, see yourself, and then see the world as a manifestation of the real self. You are not advised to close your eyes to the world, but only to see yourself first, and then see the whole world as a manifestation of the real self. If you consider yourself a body, the world seems to be something external. But if you live as the real self, the world appears as the eternal manifests. T. Reality is what is beyond all pairs of opposites. Pleasure and pain are merely aspects of the mind. Good and evil are relative terms. 
there must be a subject for good and evil to be known. This subject is the ego, the EI, that has perceptions and memories. Where does it come from? Discover perception memory, and any other experience always arise for this. I, you do not have these experiences during sleep, yet you exist while you sleep, just as you exist now. This only shows that the real self remains while other things come and go. You came from the same so. RCE you were in during sleep upon waking to the state of wakefulness. The ego arises and then thoughts appear. Simultaneously, the emergence of thought is the root of all evil. Discover where thoughts arise from, and then you will remain in the innermost most and on the present self, free from the concept of birth and the fear of death. The pure self is reality, the absolute being, consciousness bliss. When the real self is forgotten, all miseries arise when the real self is firmly maintained. Miseries cannot affect the person. All you need to do is abandon your ID, identification with this body and abandon all thoughts of external things, that is, things that are not the real self. However much the mind exteriorize towards objects of the senses, restrain it and fix it on the self. This is the entire effort you need to make. If you follow the path of your thoughts, you will be carried away by them and find yourself in an endless labyrinth turn inward and discover where thoughts arise from. For all thoughts, the base or source is, the I thought discover who has the thoughts. You must learn the art of living as a fearless soul, capable of smiling in the face of any problem we must model. Our life according to the design of a triangle, the two sides are calmness and sweetness, and the third side, the base is happiness. It does not matter whether we act quickly or slowly alone, or amid the hustle and bustle, our inner center must be balanced and serene. Christ is an example of this idea deal for wherever he was. He always manifested peace. He went through all imaginable trials without losing his serenity. Whatever your situation in life, never feel justified in losing peace when it abandons. You, and you cannot think clearly, then you have lost the battle if you never lose your battle. You will realize that victory always accompanies you, regardless of how your problems are resolved. This is the way to conquer life, win the battle of daily life. If you can maintain inner peace, you enjoy the ultimate victory at all times. Practice unshakable calmness, become the king, the absolute monarch of your own mental realm. Of calmness, do not allow anything to disturb this pleasant realm of calmness. Night and day, carry with you the ecstasy of the peace of God that serp. As is, is all understanding this mental equinity preserved, thanks to regular practice of deep meditation, eliminates the annoyance, disappointment, and afflictions of daily life, transforming life into a most interesting and joyful experience of the soul. Consider now the peace that Christ enjoyed, a peace that could not be taken away by anything. We tend to think that we will seek this peace tomorrow, but in doing so, we will never find it. Seek it right now. Spiritual growth should make you increasingly joyful, more focused, balanced, peaceful, happy, dispassionate, C.E., outrageous, compassionate, without anger, without, without selfishness, and without desires. This is the beginning of a new life, a life of expansion, glory, and divine splendor. Start a new life, follow the path, and realize I am the immortal being.